All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by Frank Soma, who is in New York. How are you doing, Frank? I am terrific, John. Good to see you. <laughs> well, that's great. And Frank is an author, speaker, uh, coach, uh, everything around sales. His last book is B2B is really P2P, How to Win with High Touch in a High Tech World. And what we wanted to talk about today is I take that a little bit further. Um, your book was published, I think, 2019. Is that correct, Frank? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Late 19, right. Yeah. And so after that, then obviously we went through the uh, the pandemic. And I think when you wrote your book anyway, Frank, uh, people were already starting to say, you know, you've got to get the people part back in there. You've got to get the human interact, the human element back in there. And then the pandemic hit and that really kind of accentuated it. So I'm just wondering, Frank, as we, as you know, now that we're sort of out of the pandemic, how much more important is that people part now is the is the human connection when you're when you're trying to sell or develop business? Well, you know, John, it's interesting because I wrote the book in response to what I saw going on in the sales world pre-pandemic, which was that people were leaning on the technology as opposed to leaning into the technology. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of the tech side. I have you know, you have pipeline CRM and, and we know, yeah. you know, we use our CRM. I wouldn't know what to do when I woke up in the morning, if not for the CRM. It's it's right. if you run it right, you know, it should be running your business life. So I love my CRM. I have cadences set up in my CRM um, that maybe are a couple of emails and then a call. My assistant is when she started with me, she lived in Pakistan. Now she lives in the UK. Yeah. You know, so the tech side of selling is something that I really do embrace. But what I found was that people thought it could replace. And it doesn't. You can, you, as I said, you can lean into the tech, but you can't lean on it. So I had a great friend, um, Anthony Steers. I don't know if you know Anthony. If not, you should get him on your podcast. He's known. He, his moniker is the telephone assassin. Yes, yeah, I have. I've, I've had him on. Yeah. Oh, he's fantastic. So Anthony said something way back when I saw him in a presentation back in 2017 or 18. And he said, email will get it off your desk, but it won't get it done. And I thought that was interesting. So subsequent to that, I was reading um, Vanessa Bond's book. I think it's called Persuasion. So, so Professor Bonds is out of Cornell University, an esteemed university in New York. And what she did is she sent folks out to make a request with an ask, much like we do all day long, right? But she took these groups of people and her experiment was to send a group out and make an ask via email. And the other half of the group would make their ask via a video or an audio call. Mm -hmm. And the results were absolutely astonishing. It was in the neighborhood of, and I'm, I'm going by memory, it was a neighborhood of um, 80% chance of success, audio visual versus 10 or 15% right. on, um, on the email side. But then she went further and she tested those very successful audio visual calls against live and in-person requests. And the numbers were staggering again, um, 67 to 33 in-person versus audio. So what you get from that, and, and what I loved about this is, mm -hmm. you know, we are, people do business with people. Now, we yep. cannot always be face to face, but it seems to me that based on my experience and why I wrote the book and based on um, Professor Bond's uh, study, it feels to me like the hierarchy of communication then would be in person if I can get it, video call if I can't, audio call if I can't get a video call. Uh, and then in last place comes email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of the things I think is 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 very interesting, and I think that the as I said, it was happening before the pandemic, but the pandemic really accentuated it. Is is that human connection thing, as you said? I mean, and if you can't get in front of somebody, at least you can get on video. But I think the most important thing is that 
people, I think just people just want to be acknowledged, seen and heard as people, um, not as data in, in a system. Yeah, I, I mean, very true. And, you know, we communicate visually primarily, right? You remember the Maharabin study out of UCLA mm-hmm. where you know, he determined that 50 percent, 57 percent of your communication is is through your body English. And the, what I try to uh, explain to people when they don't understand that the words don't matter is just think of your favorite comedian. You know, sarcasm mm-hmm. is exactly what Maharabin said. It's using words with a different body la- language and a different tone to give them different meaning. You know, it's looking right, at somebody right. and being insulting by saying, you're beautiful. Well, that doesn't mean you're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's body language and tone that determine our message. And that's best given when we can see folks. Little things like an eyebrow pop or or a smile. You know, um, there's so many things that happen physically when you're meeting someone face to face and you know, little it's 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 hard to remember all of these things, right? My background is NLP and and mm-hmm. we do a lot of body language study and how to meet folks and things like that and, and rapport study. And I remember taking a class with um it'll come to me, Joe, Joe Navarro. So FBI lie detector, human lie right. detector guy, right? Joe Navarro. Mm-hmm. And Joe said something in the class I've never forgotten. He said the feet never lie. I'm like, what does that mean? He said, the feet never lie. He said, if you're, if you're in bed with your lover and your feet touch and they repel, you have problems. And we all laugh, <laughs> right? Because that was funny. But then he was explaining how the feet will turn away from a conversation often before a person terminates the conversation. And so what, what happened was, you know, like with any learning, John, if I could go on mm-hmm. with it for just a sec. Yes, go you, ahead. You know, with any new learning, right, you got the hierarchy of learning. You are unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know. And then you become consciously incompetent. You know that you don't know it. And then you can become consciously competent. So you know that you know it. And then you become unconsciously competent, mastery, where mm-hmm. you do it automatically. It's when I'm driving my car and a cat runs across the road, I don't think, let me lift my foot from the gas to the brake pedal and depress it so I don't hit this cat. It just happens. Right. That's some that's unconscious competence. Mm -hmm. So what happened with Barbara is I had just learned this. I had gone to a meeting and I met um, this woman named Barbara at this mixer. And we we'd known each other. Uh, She's a wonderful salesperson. So we got to talking. And what Joe Navarro said in, in this class I had just taken the day before was that folks don't cross their feet. Right. One foot crossed over the other unless they're very comfortable with you. Hmm. Because, you know, going back to your limbic system, right, your old caveman brain, you're vulnerable, yeah. your feet are crossed. Someone could push you and you would fall over versus being solidly planted on the ground. So you only do put you, make yourself vulnerable when you know and trust someone. So right. I just right. learned this stuff. I am now consciously competent and Barbara crosses one foot over the other. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? Barbara's really comfortable. And then I remembered Joe Navarro's class, and I thought to myself, let me make her uncomfortable. And <laughs> I moved, and I turned my feet on a 45-degree angle away from Barbara. She picked it up subconsciously, as we do with our limbic system, and immediately uncrossed her feet because she became uncomfortable. It looked like I was leaving the conversation. Right. So I, I turned back toward her asked some good questions, got her feeling comfortable again. She crossed her feet again. I turned my feet away again. She uncrossed her feet again. (laughs) It was the most amazing test moment. I, to this day, I cannot tell you what Barbara and I talked about. I'm embarrassed to say, because I was consciously competent. I was so focused on Joe's class and feet were doing that. But, but it just, you know, bringing it back around, it's about human connection. So here's a person who didn't take Joan of Arrow's class, but her subconscious picked up the movement of my feet away from the conversation and it made her instantly uncomfortable. What does that tell you about the subtleties of facial cues and body postures when you're talking to somebody? 
Mm-hmm. And and that translates, I mean, obviously not the feet, because uh, you can't see my feet online, but I mean, it still translates to online is that is that you still have to try and engage as humanly as possible with the other person, like through video, just um, because like, as we were saying, is that's what people are picking up on your cues all the time. I did an interview with the with the body language expert and he said, yeah, the you can still communicate, you know, a lot of things through through video if you're if you're conscious of it or you're, you know, consciously competent. Yeah, very true. You know, John, as as I'm speaking and I'm listening to you, you you're doing all of the things that a great listener should do. And you're very good at this. Obviously, that's you have this wonderful podcast and you've got these skills. But, you know, you're nodding where a nod is appropriate. You're smiling where a smile is appropriate. You're you're making a facial expression that says, I understand. Or you're grunting. And I don't mean that in a, <laughs> you know, like a, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're making an auditory sound to let the speaker know that you're understanding. You hear them. You agree with the point, whatever. So when you're in person or on video with folks, it's it's vitally important that you give that kind of feedback either way in person or with, because look what happens to us now right I, I i had to go to the doctor's office a, a week ago and there were not one not two but three screens in the, in the waiting room and then the anteroom and i'm like do I really need to be barraged with morning <laughs> clothes? And, you know, I just wanted to read my book while I was waiting. Mm-hmm. But this is the world that we live in, right? We've got these distractions all around us. And, of course, that computer and built-in distraction in our pockets. And when we see people face-to-face, we are sometimes not as focused as we might be. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and they looked over your shoulder at the screen <laughs> in the bar because the basketball game is going on? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a moment that rapport slips. People don't want to believe it's true, but rapport slips in that moment. So I think being being in person, now that we're coming out of what was a restrictive environment with the pandemic and folks were staying home and or um, avoiding big meetings, you know, I've I've Mm -hmm. done keynote talks at four big meetings in the last several weeks, and people were just really happy to be back in person again you know i could see it coming out of them but the but you know i went over some of the things that like we're talking about where you don't look at your phone and you don't look over someone's shoulder and you do square up to let them know that you're in rapport and you don't point your feet like i went over all of these things with people because we may be a little rusty yeah, that's a, that's a great point actually about the fact that we we all may be a little bit rusty at this. Um, the other the other thing that I just wanted to come back on, as you said, is uh, it's not just about being in person or on video and visual, but it's also about being present and in the moment. And to your point, that's one of the biggest struggles I think that people have nowadays, and they really need to pay attention to because. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, you have the phone. When's the last time you had a conversation with somebody and they glanced down at a text midway through and then came back to your conversation? But in that moment, you know, well, not 100 percent in the moment here, you know, 100 percent focus on what we're saying. And kind of, to be honest, it's frankly rude. But there you go. Yeah. You know, the, sometimes, John, you may not even process that in your conscious mind. You may not even say oh, she just looked at her phone for a Mm -hmm. nanosecond and therefore we've lost a little, or I feel a little bit insulted or whatever it is. You just do. These Mm -hmm. are these these cues, you know, that we have as human beings. You know, before there was language, when we were human, before there was language and there were only grunts and groans, (laughs) we got our message 100% via body language, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, one of the things when I was on stage a couple of weeks ago at at a... insurance meeting at, in, in Iowa, um, we talked about meeting someone and how important it is to square up. You know, I asked the audience, have you ever met anybody that you just didn't care for? There wasn't anything they said. There was nothing overt. You couldn't put your finger on it, but you just met them and were like, mm, maybe not my type of person. And, and I will submit to you that when that happened, that person violated one of the NLP rules that we use to meet another mm-hmm. you know nick boothman uh, outlined this beautifully in his book 
how to make anyone like you in 90 seconds or less. And what, what he said the five steps were is open eye, beam, high lean. Be open, eye, make eye contact, beam, smile, hi, say hello, how are you, whatever. Lean, just lean in slightly at the end to convey a sense of intimacy. So my feeling is that when you met someone that you maybe didn't care for that much, they didn't square up. They didn't face their heart mm -hmm. to your heart. And, and again, pre-language, what did, what did cavemen dwellers have? What did, what did cavemen have to judge one another? If, if you saw, if, if your ancestors 100 million years ago saw another being on the trail, they stayed a little bit sideways. They didn't expose their throat, right. heart, lungs, groin, right? Because they didn't trust. When it became someone they trusted, they opened up. Your, your limbic system, your lizard brain still remembers that. And when somebody is not wide open facing you, it's a bit off-putting. You don't say he's not facing me, it's off-putting, but your brain processes it that way, which is why it's so important to be wide open and you can exercise these things on a video call and in person. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's a really, it's a really, uh, it's a fantastic point. Is that people may be rusty on this stuff. You may be making, you may be making unconscious errors here just because you're, you're out of practice, or maybe you've been used to doing things at an arm's length for so long that you've forgotten what it's like to to do it up close and and personal. Right, for sure, and and it's if if we can remember, you know, primarily that we are physical beings and just little things like you know in nlp we call it uptime but giving your attention to someone entirely it's it's life-changing for that mm -hmm. person it's life-changing for the rapport that you will build when you when you give yourself over entirely meaning you're making eye contact you're nodding in approval maybe a light arm touch where an arm touch is appropriate you're smiling at the right times. You're making sounds, verbal affirmations that relate to what you're hearing. You are completely engaged in the thing that you're doing. There are no distractions. And if you do that, I promise you, you will gain rapport like crazy. People will look at you as an old friend all the time, even if you've just met. Uh, and you know what's great about that, Frank? Well, it's great and it's sad at the same time is that It'll make you stand out now because a lot of people don't do this or a lot of people allow themselves get distracted or whatever. They're not in the moment. So if you do exactly what you just outlined there, you will stand out, uh, which is a crazy thing to say. You'll stand out because you're actually paying attention to the other person. You know, even before phones, though, John, there were people that yeah. just were not 100 percent into what they were doing. You know, you hear yeah. this thought of being the moment or you know, do what you're doing while you're doing it or be present. But when you're engaged in a conversation with another person, even short snippets, you know, I once met, uh, I was I was at the uh, Buildings Museum in Washington, D.C. at an event, and I met President Clinton, then President Clinton. And I didn't have, we, we did not share the same political ideology. I did not vote for President Clinton. Um, I wasn't a person that got starstruck easily. I'd met dozens of movie stars through my charity fundraising work it was just part of that job. Mm -hmm. And when I met Mr. Clinton, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I was absolutely like, I can't even explain it. I was awestruck. And it wasn't because he was the president. I had met Jimmy Carter. I had met Ronald Reagan. You know, I'm not name dropping. I'm just, saying, I'm just getting contact. Sure, yeah. The reason that Bill Clinton bowled me over is because I was in a receiving line with hundreds of people. And the moment I shook his hand, his focus on me was so intense. He was open heart to heart. He grabbed my hand. He leaned in slightly. He said, hi, I'm Bill Clinton. Like he had to say that, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, introduced himself and held my gaze for a moment with a smile on his face. I felt like I was the only person in the room. Wow. I mean, it's it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, isn't it amazing? Like, as you said, I mean, he even introduced himself as Bill Clinton. Obviously, yeah. you know, you didn't. But the fact is, for the person on the receiving end, that's that's you're putting yourself on the same level. You're just saying, hey, you know, I'm not assuming that you know who I am, even though I know who you know, that sure. you probably much know who I am. But it's those it's those things that just make such a massive, massive difference. Mm hmm. 
I, I think that's, you know, we, we talk about charisma and we meet people who we feel are charismatic. And what is it? You know, they make charismatic people make you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. that's to me that's what charisma really is it's about making other folks feel good and it's not gratuitous compliments it's paying attention it's finding things that you like and relating to them but the expression i use when i'm coaching folks is when you're going to do that there's a difference between relating and hijacking right you want to wait mm -hmm. for the popcorn to stop popping before you jump in so you know if somebody, if I say, well, what did you do last weekend? And you say, well, you know, I went out um, and I went for a hike. Uh, I, I live near this wonderful mountain range and I went for a hike and it was a beautiful day. I'm like, oh my God, I love hiking too. You know, one time I went to Vermont with my yeah. son-in-law and we went, you know, I feel like I'm relating. And a lot of new salespeople do this be because they're nervous and they want to make sure they're in rapport. So they start to say things to relate, but what they've done is hijack the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another that's another excellent uh, excellent point uh, excellent point, Frank. And I think that that's something that yeah, I think a lot of people fall into that trap because we've we've become a society where people are so intent on responding, right? And mm -hmm. and they're suddenly and they've been unconsciously taught now, like oh, I want to be the first one to comment on that. Right. I want to be the first one to respond to that. Therefore, right. when you right. say something, I'm going to cut over you because I I. I, I, I so excited about saying something. So yeah, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you know people need to relearn and perhaps learn for the first time. Uh, listen, Frank, this has been fantastic as usual. Uh, all of Frank's information are below this video. But before we go, Frank, do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh sure. So I, I'm a keynote speaker for in sales and communications, and I'm at you know various conventions as I just mentioned, or sales, uh, corporate sales meetings, I get hired into, I do some coaching one-on-one -on -one mostly. I used to do some groups, it's not so much anymore. And my book is available on my website or on Amazon. I am uh, franksoma.com for anything, speaking, coaching, books, whatever, you can see what I'm about on the site. All right. Fantastic. And I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, as you've gotten from this uh, interview, there's a lot of great, uh, a lot of great tips, a lot of great uh, strategies and skills that you can learn. So go check out Frank and his book. Uh, thanks again, Frank. Thank you for watching yeah. and listening. See you all again soon.